video demonstration of polarography for module CM3292 and your hosts are Emma, Full Man and myself Simon. Okay, let's uh, begin just by thinking about the equipment. Uh, this is the polarograph. Um, our first job is to turn the nitrogen supply to the polarograph on. And surprise, surprise, we turn the mains on. And at the back there is a switch. There is a switch just here. It needs to be on. The only indication that the power is actually on is the small green light here. And of course, we need the uh, computer screen and printer on. Now, um, I'm not going to talk about the theory of polarography because there is a, a lecture on that, deep holy and abounding joy. Um, this video is simply about how this equipment works and some of the precautions that you need to use, uh, adopt when using this equipment. Um, first of all, I'm going to gently lift this up and if you lift this lid up you will see that it fits here and stands up. It's really really easy to lift this up quickly or slam it down quickly and if you do that you will uh, potentially um, damage, not damage, your lock hop of an air bubble in the capillary which means you'll waste a lot of time because it won't be working properly. So when you lift this up or close it down, please do so gently, like that, um, and then we probably should be okay. Okay, so the computer's running. Um, we, we probably need to start up the software, which is 797VA double click it and you should get a screen like that. Okay, I'm going to hand over to Hannah now um, who's going to walk through the practical with us and we'll probably chat as we go through. Okay, so you guys will have prepared your solutions of cadmium. Um, as um, Dr. Watts said, the main thing about this piece of equipment is to not jolt it. Um, if you jolt it, it can get it can clog up the mercury, which means since you're using a mercury, ele mercury electrode, it won't actually um, emit the blobs of mercury that you are using to measure. Um, so your solution goes in this glass um, crucible here, as you can see underneath. When you're lifting up this piece of equipment, do so very, very carefully and very, very slowly. It's on a spring, so don't let go until you feel it stop. As you can see, we've got uh, the mercury electrode in the middle, um, working electrode, and a reference electrode. Um, you guys should have done a little bit of uh, homework, and you should know what those are for. We've also got the nitrogen nozzle here, which we'll use to purge um, in a moment. And at the back, um, the white thing is a stirrer to make sure that we get a good equilibrium uh, mixture in there. Currently, the uh, vol uh, the, pol the electrodes are in DI water, so before you do anything, you need to empty that out. Um, it's really important that you're careful with mercury. You guys should know that it's very harmful if you swallow it. And there is over there in the sink, which I'll take you to now. We've got a funnel here uh, for mercury waste, so. At the end of each sample, you need to tip away the mercury. Um, at the end of each sample, you may have some mercury in the bottom here. Um, you need to tip that away into the funnel. And the mercury stays in the bottom here, and all the waste solvent just comes out. Holograph, you've got your sample here. Um, just put in a little bit, just to swirl around the bottom. Make sure it's clean and that you're not going to... Um, 
dilute it by any leftover water in there. Then you put your sample in. There's a marker on the side so you know about where up to where, up to where you need to put your sample in. Just above the marker is fine, as long as all the electrodes are submerged in the uh, solution. Put this back into the holder carefully, and once again, really carefully bring this down. And gently into the solution. Use both hands when you lift this up to take the clip up, and then you can pop that down as well. Okay, and now our machine is ready to go, so we just need to put down the software. So now we're ready to use the software. We're going to use VA Computer. So we'll open that up. You don't need a password or a username, just click Start Measurements, and the software should load. Okay. So um, first, first of all, we're going to go on to mode, and we're on exploratory mode. Um, to set the parameters for our um, analysis, we go on exploratory specification. And here you'll see we've got um, all the information here. Um, you guys may have learned uh, already in lectures about the um, mode that it's set on. For this experiment, we're going to be using differential pulse. So select that. The purge time is um, for nitrogen purging. Um, we've got our nitrogen on here, and as I said, we've got a, a syringe for the purging. That's basically to get rid of any um, oxygen that's or um, Because you know from your theory lecture that oxygen can be oxidized and reduced on the mercury electrode which will actually impede in your measurements. And we know the nitrogen is on because the levers facing in the same direction as the pipes. Okay, so from there we're just gonna, um, you've got the information in your booklet here. Um, these should be um, as close as possible to um, our um, start and end potential here and all the parameters. Um, we're just going to do a demonstration of this, but you may need to change this um, throughout your experiment. And then we just click start. You can see over here that it's started purging. The nitrogen tube is up in here, which uh, in the pipework that you saw before. First it passes through water here and then into our solution. The water is really just to make sure that the nitrogen is saturated with water vapour and if there were any impurities in it, um, one would hope they would stay in the water rather than going into the cell. And you can see the purging time here. Once it's, started, it, once it's finished purging, uh, you don't need to click anything, it will just automatically move on to taking the uh, measurements. Now, clearly, when you're doing this practical, you'll have samples to make up and uh, stuff like that. Um, we're not going to talk very much about the actual practical you're doing, but you're going to have a mixture of unknowns. And effectively, your practical is in two parts. You have to first identify the half cell potentials and then do the measurement of concentration. window and you can find the peak. Um, you can sort of have a pretty solid guess at where the peak is but um, to get a more accurate measuring we're going to go on peak search and search. So here we've got our um, table data of the peak. You can see here that 2 is obviously like the peak that we're looking at which is 2 here. To get that printed off we right click copy peak list, open a WordPad document, open a WordPad document, paste that in, and then we can just uh, go back on here, 
copy graphed results and also paste that on. In the practical that you do, you'll like to have multiple peaks, um, but this system will work nonetheless. Yeah, you'll be able to tell from the number numbering of the peaks um, which which peak uh, corresponds with which um, values. Okay, once you've got that, just print. <laughs> <Ta -da! laughs> um, try and fit as many as you can on one page to save paper so you can fit, fit two um, charts on each page yeah. um, mm -hmm. change the sample? Clean it up. so when you're changing your sample again remember carefully up close it slowly Empty your mercury out of the um, container over in the sink. When you're finished, wash with DI water. And make sure you put place the um, all the electrodes back in DI water before you leave the lab. Okay, we can now turn the power off. Mm. Turn the notch enough. 